All right, we got us some job shop working here to get started on. This, these are some parts and pieces that belong to a customer here locally to me. And we've got to make some pins, you know, some little steel shafts. We got to do some drilling on those rollers there, and then we got to do some drilling on all of these um, these brackets that are made up. So, this is all stuff that's been fabricated for a barn door. That's going to be one of these rolling doors. So these are the brackets that that actually um, uh, bolt to the door and allow it to slide, and then these are the rollers for it there. So, I didn't make these, by the way. They, these. Uh, he said he had another uh, CNC shop make these some time back, and he's been holding on to them. So only thing we got to do to the rollers here is we need to drill a relief hole through there. So we'll probably use an inch and an eight drill bit and just drill a hole through there and chamfer each side. Uh, all it is is clearance, so it's not important to have a nice smooth finish through there, you know, a board or ream fin finish. So we'll drill those, and then all of the brackets here, there's ten of them in total. What we need to do is drill a hole through there. Uh, but one side is actually going to be drilled. This side here is going to be drilled three-quarter, and then this side here is going to be drilled a little bit smaller. So it's actually going to uh, be bolted up to a, a shoulder there on that side. All right? So that's, uh, that's what we got to do right there. So we'll go ahead and uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start getting started on this stuff, and I will uh, show you a little bit of the machining as we, as we get going. Probably going to start with these. These are going to be the simplest, and go ahead and get these out of the way. And uh, then we'll move on to uh, drilling the holes in the bracket. I'm just getting the placement of the center of the, where the pin's going to be on the bracket there. So we're going we're, we're gonna to have to drill it from this side because this side's going to be a three-quarter hole. And then the bottom side down there is probably going to be something around uh, half inch or five-eighths. I haven't decided yet because this side over here is going to have the, the threads and a nut that goes on the back side. And he says, whatever size I want to use is, is what we'll do. It doesn't have to be anything, as long as there's some threads there. But so we got 24 inches from the end right there. And that gives us plenty of room because these are not exactly, though. Know, they're, they're probably all within one eighth of an inch. So he said, just go ahead and line it up with this, this diameter right here. Once we set it in there, just line it up with the edge on the on the bottom there this edge right there and just locate the center that way that way there's a little bit of uh, wiggle room in there that this thing can you know float in this this gap right there so that, i'm just showing you that's how i'm getting my center distance so we're going to set it up in the mill like this to do our drilling and we'll have to support this side here with some machinist jacks one more quick note i thought this would be a good time to bring this up i've talked about this before but i don't know who made these but they did not deburr them. That's still the saw cut in. It's razor sharp right there. All right, and that is on both ends. Both ends of these were not deburred, and that's how it is on every single one of these. They're all the same. They got the saw on the end on there. They haven't been dressed. And the reason I'm bringing that up is because I feel that it's important to either the, the welder, the fabricator, or the machinist, whoever's making the parts, always deburr your parts. Never leave a part go out of the shop that sharp that will cut somebody, a customer or whoever. So always deburr your parts. Please don't leave these sharp razor edges on there for somebody to slice their fingers open. We're gonna use this core drill to drill the hole through the center of the wheels. This is an inch and an eight. And these core drills work really good when you're just wanting to open up a hole. The three flutes there provide a little bit more stability for the drill to go through there, and they, they say they leave a little bit nicer finish in there too. But this one is still good, but it is it has been used quite a bit. It's been a long time since I've sharpened it, so I'm going to go ahead and resharpen all three flutes on this drill using the uh, Lyle drill grinder here. So I'll show you how I do that. I've already spent the time to uh, get the fixture here set up to hold the drill. I've already got videos on how to use this drill grinder, so uh, just do a search on my channel if you haven't seen them. Uh, drill bit, the uh, Lyle drill grinder or drill bit sharpening, and you should be able to pull up a couple videos on it.
Doing uh, three flute drills is a little tricky. It can be a little tricky because if you if you rotate it too far, you're going to get into the next flute right there. So I've got the proper angle set up on the machine right here so that we're, we're cutting it properly. And you see, hopefully you can see, we've got a nice grind cleaned up on that flute there. And we should be good to go. So now I can index it around and go ahead and get to this next one. There's a close-up of the first grind for you. You see we, we cleared the, the next flute behind it there so we didn't get into it. Didn't quite clean that flute up, so it looks like we might have to go around it. All the way, well, it's only the second time, but I'm gonna go ahead and feed in enough to clean that flute up, so we'll have to go back to our first flute and make sure it's grounded to the same, same depth. There we go. Now we're cleaned up all the way across that. Land. So we'll go ahead and flip it to the next one, grind that, and then we'll go back to our first one and touch that up so that's the same depth. There's all three flutes ground. That one didn't clean the whole, the whole flute up, but you can see the cutting edge is cleaned up. So hopefully we'll have a nice even cutting drill there to do our hole drilling. All right, we're gonna use our six jaw chuck and hopefully all we'll have to do is maybe a little bit of bumping around on the face to get the face running true. But that's one of the benefits of these six jaws here is with the, uh, with the six jaws you get a lot of contact there and it usually squares up pretty nicely on a, on a work piece even if it's only chucking a half inch like we are there now. Let's see what it looks like spinning. See that's pretty good. Let me grab the indicator and see how close the face is to zero. So we're almost two thousandths. Not bad. Not bad at all. So we'll just go ahead and bump in our highs. Look at that. So that's a half a thousandth right there. Probably about as close as it's going to get. Yep, so we'll leave that right there. Now let's see what our OD is doing. Last time I had this uh, dialed in, on the, uh, this is the set true. So you can set it with these four bolts here. So it looks like we've got, we got one thousandth run out right there okay now that could be in the part I don't know this could be running a little bit out from that I didn't machine that but it's very possible but for what we're doing we're just drilling a hole it doesn't have to match our bearing fit or anything this out here 
So we're going to run with that one just like it is, being 1,000 out on the OD. But that's it's really good for a scroll chuck. I love it. All right, we're ready to cut a cut our hole bigger. Put a little dark cutting oil in there. Once you get all three flutes in there, that chatter will stop. Looks like it's doing good. It's cutting on all three. Material seems to be something like a uh, just a mild steel, possibly a 1018 or a 1045. It's definitely not 4140. Nice even chip on all three flutes there. All right, so while that's set up, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and do use this tool right here, and we're going to chamfer this side. It's all you need just to break the edge. So I think we'll uh, we'll go ahead and flip it around and see about chamfering the other side also. Not much area to, to uh, clamp on, but I think we can do it. It's going to be it's going to be fine for chamfering, definitely. So just try to get her centered up by feel. I did not get it that time. We are going to have to indicate it. I'm just going to go ahead and, and do this on all of them since the uh, tool is already set where it needs to be. That's within in the thousands right there. Close enough for chamfering that edge. Make sure the chuck is snug. Just showing you the finishes that we got there. This is the next one I just set up, already bumped the face true, and I'm just checking the OD right there, and it's within a half a thousandths. Very cool. averaging about three minutes a piece now that was my last count 
So we'll go ahead and start it over. It's kind of fun to see where we'll be at on our uh, repetitious cycle here. Half a thou. One thou. All right. About the same time there. Two forty five. All right, we got all 13 of the rollers finished, and that's all we got to do to those, just drill the hole and chamfer them. So now we're going to go ahead and move on from this and you know, get started drilling the, the uh, flat bar. It's going to put us a mark down there so we know where to line up our hole. We're going exactly 24 inches from the end. All right, so this is my setup. Since I want to put the three-quarter hole on this side and a half on the on the bottom there, we're going to clamp this area in the vise. I've got a planer jack set up here with a hold-down clamp. I've also got a stop down here. This is a positive stop that will allow me to put the holes in the same location every time. So we'll just set that down there on the parallels. We've got it leveled out here on the planer jack, and I have just enough height with this stop here that we can slide it down gently against the stop 
go ahead and tighten it up. I've got this set up ready to go so that we can put the strap clamp right on top of the planer jack there. And that'll support the top of the bar up there. So we've got good clamping area right here. We've got our planter jack there. We're up against our stop. So we will uh, position our pointer right there on our scribe line. Now we'll add a little bit more stability right in here because this is still going to try to move around a little bit. We'll use our Starrett Little Giant. Come right up in here and just apply, uh, you know, finger, finger tight here to the screw. Just like that. And that'll keep this from trying to squeeze down and uh, keep them together there. So I'm just going to visually find the center using this pointer here. This is a 60 degree center. Since these things were formed on a roller, they're going to be tweaked one way, one way or the other, just a little bit. So if I clamp this in there and find the center of one bar, when I put another one in there, it's not going to be in the same exact position. So we want to be in the center of this area right here. All right, so I'm just going to line it up by sight. So there's our 24 inch mark and now we want to go over to our one inch mark. I'm just standing over here. I'm going to move the table over by hand. And that looks like the center. So that should be well within, I'd say 10 thousandths either way of a uh, you know piece of hot rolled flat bar right there. I'm going to put a half inch pilot hole in the top. We're using a stubby drill here and then we'll come on through the bottom using a regular uh, regular half inch jobber drill and then we'll come back and finish the top out at three quarters. So I've got the machine set at 210 RPM. This is slower than what's recommended for drilling carbon steel but I don't like changing the pulleys a bunch. So we're just going to use 210 for a half inch and then I'm going to slow it down to 135 to do our three quarter. You're definitely not going to hurt anything by drilling the slower. You just don't want to let it grab and break the end of the drill. All right, so we'll swap our drill bit out and we'll put our half inch jobber in here. Come on down to the bottom there. And since we're not, we don't have like a center divot there, we're just going to take it easy at first. Bring the table up just a touch. Without applying a lot of pressure, we're just letting the center of the drill get itself started. And then you'll feel it once it starts kind of cutting in there. we go. Now I was going back and forth on how I wanted to cut in the uh, three-quarter hole and I was thinking of drilling it and reaming it. It doesn't need to be any kind of precision hole. It's just it needs to be a hole for a three-quarter pin to slide through without a bunch of slop. But I don't want it I don't want it tight either where you have to fight the pin to go through there. So I decided I'm going to use my, my uh, counter boring tool. This is normally used for cap head bolts or socket head bolts, should I say. All right, but it worked out perfect because you have a half inch pilot and then it's got a three quarter cut right there. So I'm gonna use this. I gotta drop the table just a little bit to get it in there. And that's gonna work good for that top, top end. I'm gonna slow it down. I always like to run these a little slower. You don't wanna burn these cutters up. It's not like buying a drill bit. So now we're going to run 135 and keep it oiled. And it's going to do a beautiful job cutting that three quarter hole there without a bunch of fuss.
See that? And even the finish of the hole looks beautiful. I mean, it just, it looks like a, you know, an end mill cut it or even a reamer cut it. Looks good. I'm getting, that was 753, 754. So, you know what, five thousandths, approximately five thousandths over. So that's not bad at all. That's going to work. So I'm not going to do any deburr in there. I'm going to I'm going to hand deburr these with my Noga once I get through with them all. Using my fast evaporating solvent really helps break down the cutting oil there, and just blow the chips off. Go in with it. Remove the strap clamp and then we'll loosen the vise and we are ready to swap it out and put in another one. So there we go.
we're on the last two of these bars here we got to drill and I want to lay them out and you can see that it's going to be a little bit more tricky just to lay the scale there to uh, get my scribe line there but I've got a I've got a nice little tool here that we're going to use to make this uh, very very simple and easy so I can just lay my scale there again we just need a block that goes in here all right so let me show you what I'm going to use this is one of the tool sets that Jason from Fireball Tool had given me and these are for sale over on his website and these are some magnetic blocks that he has developed and he now sells and they are simply pieces of steel these are not hardened and precision ground like uh, like gauge blocks these are just shop blocks used for uh, general stack up and things like that he, he developed them for fab work but I mean uh, there's plenty of different uses out there and what I'm going to do is to take a couple of these and see they, they got a couple of magnets stuck in there so this one is a three-quarter thick block and you have a whole array of different size blocks that, that come in this kit so we're going to take a one inch and then we've got some here also and these are three sixteenths this is three sixteenths we also have some quarter and uh, five sixteenths three eighths all standard inch sizes there and then you can stack these together just like so and he's got these developed so that they they'll, they'll stick down to the to the workpiece or the job that you're on like that but they're they they do not necessarily attract all of the dust around it too all right so that's that's pretty cool all right so we're going to stack these up and put our scale on top of that and use that to you know for our measuring so we got our two shot blocks here and i'm going to stick them down into the flat bar and we're just going to square them up this is we're just doing this very simple kind of by sight deal so i'm going to use my rule and get them squared up there to the end of the flat bar that looks good and we're going to lay our rule up on top here go ahead and get the get that end square and i'm going to go ahead and put a small clamp down here on this other end to keep it where i want it all right don't necessarily need one right there but i will we've got this small c clamp that we'll put on just to hold it all right so that worked out really good with these little blocks right here All right, that's going to do it for all of the uh, flat bar here, the, uh, the hangers, and we've already got those drilled. So the next phase of this is actually machining the pins that are going to fit through these and, and through the rollers there. So we'll, uh, we'll get started on that next.